Hello, my friends. I hope you're doing well. And if you're new here, I'm Jim. Thanks for stopping by. Today, I am in Luminar Neo, and I've got a tip for you. Uh, I wanna, I'm curious what you think about this tip. So please, please try this on some photos. I challenge you to try this on some photos. Come back and leave me a comment here. Let me know what you think about it. This tip is around adjusting kind of white balance color temperature, and there's perhaps a better way to do it. If you take a look at my screen here, I've got two photos. It's the exact same photo. It's an original and a copy. I've cropped them both and I've done some minor adjustments in develop raw in both. So here's what happens, right? I've got my photo. I go into develop raw. You can see in my edit menu, I've done some basic things here. But one of the things I really like to do to a photo is adjust the color temperature and the tint because I like to play with color. I like color. I can't help it. It's a thing. Um, and what I'll often do, and you'll see me do this in videos all the time because I do it on every photo, is I come in and play with temperature and tint. And a lot of times it works really well. It doesn't always work really well. That's the trick, or really that's the challenge. And I've got a trick to help you overcome that. So what I'm trying to do is, this was a sunset. There's some brighter parts that have some nice warmth in them. And then there's some darker parts that are kind of shadowy that are kind of blue. So what I want to do is keep that interplay, that color contrast between the warm and the cool, because I like that in my photos. I think it looks good because the warm and the cool complement each other. So if you have a little bit of a bump in both and you keep that color contrast, in other words, you don't make the whole thing warm or the whole thing cool. If you keep that color contrast, I think you have a more compelling image. So what would I do? Temperature and tint, I would come in and say, well, you know, I, I really want to keep those cool parts cool. And if I make them cooler, they get a little bit darker. So that adds to the contrast, which can help. But everything gets blue because it's a temperature slider affecting the entire photo. So if I go the other way and say, well, I really want those warm parts to be warm, I can come over here and do this. But of course, that's a temperature slider for the whole photo. So all the photo is getting warm, not just the parts that I want to get warm. So what I end up doing is just kind of moving this around until I find something. And maybe I'm like, ah, I kind of want to go a little bit bluer. And then I'm going to play with tint because I kind of like that magenta look. And maybe I'm going to drag this and, you know, same kind of thing. And that is as I drag it to the right to increase that tint and get more magenta, it's impacting the entire photo. Well, the thing is, I don't really want it across the entire photo. I really want it more in the highlights. So I don't really have a way to do that. And then maybe a bump of the vibrance. And, you know, you got to be careful because bottom line is things can get out of control. And, you know, you might also be thinking, well, hey, Jim, just, you know, use the develop tool and then go use it again and mask it in. Great idea. However, I don't have luminosity masking and I really want luminosity masking because then I could go apply a tint or temperature adjustment to the highlights with the luminosity mask on a second instance of develop raw, but I can't do that. So what's the solution? Well, let me tell you what my solution is. Uh, first, I'm going to get this photo kind of wherever I think I kind of like it, maybe like that. I, I don't really like it. It's not exactly what I want. So I'm going to go back out to my catalog. That's that photo. This is the same photo, a different copy of it, same crop, same basic adjustments in Develop Raw, as you can see here. That's what the photo looked like before Develop Raw, and that's what it looks like now. Same thing as I did on the original copy of it. But here's a different idea and a better way, I think, to adjust the temperature and the tint more accurately in Luminar Neo. And that tool resides in Color Harmony, and specifically, it's called Color Balance. Now, the nice thing about color balance, there's three different tonal areas that allow you to adjust color. Hey, sounds a little bit like a luminosity mask, Jim. Well, it kind of does. It's not exactly, but it's kind of like that. So you can go into shadows or midtones or highlights and pick a color scheme, so to speak. And by the way, while we're talking about complementary colors, 
let me remind you of kind of this color diagram, this color wheel, where opposite colors, the ones that are uh, farthest across from each other, are complementary. Well, if you notice, there's a red and a cyan. They're opposite each other. You notice the slider here is cyan and red. Hey, this green and magenta are opposite each other. There's also a magenta green. And this yellow and blue are opposite each other. There's also a yellow and blue. So keep that in mind. That's what this represents in color harmony. This color balance section is basically that. And the great thing is it allows me to specifically pick a tonal area, shadows in this case, and go make some adjustments. Well, remember I said I kind of wanted the cool parts to stay kind of cool and blue because it's a nice interplay or counterbalance to the warmer uh, parts and the highlights. Well, how do you make the cool stuff in the shadows cooler, well, you go in and you can just add a little bit of blue. So I'm going to go to about a 10. So there it is before and there it is now. In shadows, I added 10 to blue away from yellow. I didn't touch the other two. Now midtones, midtones, uh, there's a lot of midtones in an image. So be aware of this. Sometimes with midtones, I will go more towards what I did with the shadows. And sometimes in midtones, I go more towards what I do with the highlights. To me, it depends on the photo, and honestly, it depends on what kind of look I'm going for. Sometimes I'm doing creative color things, and I'm all over the place. But in this case, my midtones are going to go kind of in the direction that I'm going to go with my highlights, which is going to be warmer. So I'm going to get away from cyan in the midtones, and I'm going to go toward the red. That's about a 10. And then on magenta green, I like that kind of magenta. It's kind of a romantic kind of sunset color. And this was a sunset. And I kind of want to amplify that a little bit. So in this edit, I'm going midtones, 10 towards red, negative 7 towards magenta. I'm going to leave the yellow and blue out of it. And then, of course, I'm going to hit the highlights. So again, not a luminosity mask, but it's specifically targeting the highlight areas and allowing me to apply these colors just to those. So it's a very targeted way to go in and get the color look or the white balance kind of temperature look that you want. I'm going to do about a 10 on the red. I'm going to do about a negative 10 on the magenta. And I'm also going to do about a negative 10 on the yellow. So there we go. So now if you look at before any of this color balance work, that's what the photo looked like. And there it is now. So I think I've got a much more balanced photo in terms of the overall color temperature and the general look and feel that I'm going for than I had if I was just using the color temperature and tint slider in develop. And so, in fact, let's go compare them so that you can see for yourself. I'll go back to catalog. This is the photo that I just edited with color balance. And the one on the left, quite a bit bluer, that's the one I did just with temperature and tint. Now, it can depend on the image, and this may not necessarily be the approach you want to take every single time, but if you want more control over the colors that are going in specific tonal areas, that's what color balance does and it does it really well. I think on this left hand side, I have a, you know, I have a nice looking photo. I like that photo and I might would come in and say, let me give it some golden hour or let me give it some split toning in the highlights and give it some warmth and things like that. And you can do that for sure. Or you can just pop over to color balance and with one tool, just come in and get a similar look, which is going to be warmer in the highlight lights, keep it cool in the shadows and overall get a more balanced color look based on using color balance. So that's what this video was about, my friends. Please experiment with that. Check it out on your own images. Come back and leave me a comment about how it's working for you and what you think about it. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you really dig what I did in that video as well. So check that out. Otherwise, thumbs up if you like these kind of tips. And if you want more, let me know. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you soon, my friends. You guys take care of yourselves. And until next time, adios.